Welcome, everybody. It is your boy. It is me. It is the Cyber Warrior. This is Cyber Warrior Studios. And as always, we're presenting Security Happy Hour. Now with me today, I have an amazing guest. But before we get started, I just want to let you know, yes, this is a serious topic. Yes, this means a lot to me, especially with what I've been going through the past week. However, that does not mean we're not going to have a good time. I'm going to handle it with class, just like we always do. So saying that, please stick around. I hope you enjoy the episode and we'll be back here in a minute. Welcome back. And yes, once again, it is me. It is the Cyber Warrior and this is Cyber Warrior Studios with me. Our guest today, Brad Liggett. And I apologize. My partner in crime is not able to join us tonight. But that's okay. He's got a lot of things going on. So please join me in welcoming Brad and the topic at hand of mental health and keeping in touch. Now, before we get started, Brad, why don't you give us a little bit about yourself to kind of let people know, you know, why this topic is important at the very least. Oh, sure. I, so, you know, everyone talks about it, right? We, we work a lot. We're, we're stressed out a lot. Um, there's always something popping up, whether it's, you know, whether you're in, you know, sock situation, you're an IT person, um, it, in management, right? Um, we get burned out sometimes and you can sometimes just see it in people's faces. Hey, let's take a break. Um, you know, take the afternoon off or step away. And uh, it's just something I think, especially during the times of COVID over the last couple of years, um, that it, it just really became kind of hypersensitive to it. And um, working the long hours that we were doing, just sitting behind computers and Zoom, uh, just making sure that people took the time that they needed, took the breaks that they needed, had the ability to recharge the batteries, all those things. So why i like to talk about it yeah definitely and it, and, and it is it's something that's very important because it is something that we all deal with on a daily basis right uh, whether it's personal a friend a family member there's always something going on there's always um you know we always feel like we have to go 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 and 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 we don't take those mental health breaks um you know one of the big things lately is some companies well a, a lot that i've seen recently are pushing for unlimited pto that the premise being that you're going to use it for your mental health for, for that time off that you may need to take. But then one of two things happens I've seen in those situations, either people don't take the break or yep. um, they're not approved for the break. Right. Sure. They, they say I need a week and they're like, Oh, I can't give that to you. Yep. Yep. So it's been, it's been an ongoing issue, I think as of late. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's definitely the former, right? Um, you, you know, I, I sometimes kind of wake up and then get out of bed and think, gosh, I haven't stepped away for a while. This is, I'm running on, you know, all these consecutive weeks I haven't taken other than the weekends time away, step away, have that release and, and just recharge the batteries and that break. Um, so it, it happens to me a lot. Um, I see it happen in others and I'm always pointing it out as much as I can when I see it. So, yeah, definitely. And, and that's one of the things I think we need to be more cognizant of, especially those that are in leadership roles is noticing when people's mental health is on the decline, you know, maybe they're not as, um, uh, functional at work. They're not as, you know, on point, maybe they normally get things done in a day or two and it's taken them a week or two weeks or three weeks and noticing the signs of that, you know, kind of pushback and what's going on. Um, and I think that's very important to us, right? We, we need to be able to see those signs. And and you have to be willing to give your people that break that they need. Absolutely. Yep. So now, now along with mental health, you know, and one of the things, what are some of the ways that you would recommend people kind of gauge their mental health and, and whether or not they either need to take a break or maybe they need to change routine of like what to do on a daily basis what what are some of your some of your advice to kind of help your mental health in different ways beyond stepping away from work sure you know it, everyone's different right everyone responds to stressors in different ways some people thrive on it more some people get burned out by it more um and you know i 
I, I talk to a lot of people that have a lot of different releases that they do. Um, very close friend of mine, he walks a lot, right? And um, it was probably several months into COVID in the time of Zoom where you could you could hear him, he not on video, and he was kind of huffing and puffing a little bit. It's like, what's going on? He's like, I'm, I'm taking these meetings walking. And he would put in, you know, sometimes five up to 10 miles a day, just walking around his neighborhood on these calls. He was still very present. And that was just his release. I, I worked with a couple of guys on my team. Um, and yeah, during the middle of the day, it's like, you know, I'm going to step away and go for a run. It's like, hey, go for it. Do it, you know, and, and he'll go get even just a mile in or sometimes less and just go get that release and move on. Um, the other guy on the team, you know, he loves going to comedy shows or live music events, right? And so, you know, he'll get through the day because he knows he's going to step away. It's all going to be done at five and whatever comes in afterwards, it definitely can wait till tomorrow. Go see some live music, go, you know, work through that. There's, so there's all different kinds of releases, right? I mean, after we're done here, I think I was telling you earlier, there's a big old block party outside. I'm going to go walk around. I'm going to try some food, probably drink it a beer. I need to open this one up since it is happy hour. Uh, right. <laughs> and yeah, and that's just going to be kind of my release because I'll inevitably bump into people from the neighborhood or, or friends that I know, um, you know, here in Kansas City. First Fridays of every month, there's about 25,000 people on average that come down to the crossroads for music and entertainment, food trucks, art galleries, all those things, right? And so that's something that we all look forward to. And, you know, when I'm done, I'm going to go meet up with some people outside. Yeah, definitely. And and that's, again, for me, it's, it's weird because I'm a happy drinker, right? When I drink, um, I don't like to drink when I'm in a bad mood. I don't like to drink when I'm angry. You know, there's some people that that'll drink to um, numb the pain, like mental pain or, or whatever the case may be, which then, in my opinion, and, and just from what I've experienced as a person, it makes it worse for me. It doesn't numb the pain. It accentuates it. Sure. Um, and and so even in college and stuff, I was never one like if I was angry, I couldn't drink like I'd have a sip like this don't even taste good. This, this doesn't even it, it's not the same. Others are the complete opposite. They only drink when they're in a bad mood or, or whatever the case may be. So for me, yeah, it is very much a – that's how I kind of just calm down and, and take a break and relax. It's like, you know what, let me – end of the day, let me have a beer or two, and we'll be good to go. Um, but it's not for everybody. It's, yeah. you know, smoking is not for everybody for sure. You know, um, everybody has their vices and things that calm them down, whether it's spiritual, physical – mental, whatever the case may be. Um, and so I think it's about finding that within yourself. Right. Yep. You know, finding, quit trying to walk. Been doing a lot of research lately. And and, and it comes <laughs> down to a lot of things are, are walking your own path. And yep. I've said this before. Everybody has their own path to walk. No, no two people are the same. Now, you can take someone like me and Davin who have met and come across a lot of the same people and had a lot of the same um, experiences with work and, and learning and things like that. But that doesn't make us the same people. That doesn't make us, you know, like we're on the same journey. It's, right. it's, you know, it's just one of those things where we happen to coincidentally have some of the same mentors and, and things of that nature. Um, so, so I do, I think it's finding what works for you. What is going to clear your mind? And I, and I think that's something that we those in this field with ADHD, OCD, ADD, ABCD, and everything else under the sun that just can't calm their mind, I think that's something we struggle with is, well, what's going to calm my mind? What's going to allow me to just yeah. be? Yeah, you know, um, one of the things for me is, you know, when you talk about not just the, the evening breaks or the recharging the batteries over the weekend, um, for me, it's travel. That is, I have found that to be my thing. Now I've grown up, uh, all, you know, when I was younger, we, we went on a lot of road trips, right? Um, occasionally we get on a plane and go somewhere. When I was 
probably in my 20s, I did not like to fly. It was just not my thing. And then I'd say probably back in 2006, I went on my first true, like real overseas trip. And yeah. then the, the, the travel bug bit me um, like hard. And it's gotten to the point where, yeah, when, when I've realized that I haven't stepped away and taken consecutive days off, the way that I really do it is I, I'll just go as far away as I can for as little as I can, of course, um, have to be budget minded, but, um, you know, getting to places to, and seeing and exploring, um, and the way I do it really is I just use Google flights. I don't ever go anywhere with a destination in mind. I go, I, I, I look for somewhere with dates in mind and I go to Google flights uh. and put in those dates. And then of course, you know, I'm, I'm a Delta snob. So I, you know, I, put in, <laughs> I put in Sky Team as a filter, and then I just open the map and look for the different price ranges. And when yeah. I find something that's pretty affordable, like right before the pandemic, I was in Scottsdale uh, for some meetings with a client at the hotel bar that night, and it just hit me like a ton of bricks. And I was sitting with my boss at the time. I said, Mark, I'm going to the room. And he's like, what? It's 8.30. It's like, I'm going upstairs and I'm buying a plane ticket somewhere in the world. And he's like, yeah, you haven't taken a break in a while. I was going to talk to you about that. And I was like, well, it, I see it. It's time to go. And I found a round trip ticket to Taipei for $700. And just nice. thought, that's it. And I spent 10 days on the other side of the globe just doing what I do, exploring and, and, and having that you know, time away, unplugged. Um, it was that, so that's the thing for me. Right. And again, everyone's different, but that's what I've found really kind of gets me just to continue to keep going so that I can have that opportunity to do that. Yeah, definitely. And it's, you know, for me, I don't travel, you know, I did my time in the army. So I, I, I saw a bunch of different States um, I, I've been deployed. I did a bunch of different things. So for me, um, travel isn't of that much importance, right? Because it is as much as I want to, I want to see the world. Um, right now, especially lately with a wife and five kids, you know, it's just one of those things where I'm like, you know what? Yeah. I'd rather not. I'd rather a not spend the money. <laughs> I could do it on something more closer to home that the kids of will course. enjoy yeah and and b the world's too crazy i'm not going to go somewhere and get stuck in another country and not be able to make it home okay. like i'm not dealing with that nonsense yeah so it's it's just one of those things that i've looked at and been like yeah um me and my wife have talked about it i want to go to germany i want to go to ireland like i yep. want to see these places where i know part of my heritage comes from sure and i just I, i'm like you know what as much as I want to, it's it's not worth it right now. Yep. Maybe if the world ever stops being crazy and, and safe again, you know, I, then okay. But I don't feel safe going anywhere outside of my, you know, bubble, I guess you would say. But sure. I've traveled. So um, I'd love to get to Japan. I'd love to get to China. You know, I'd love to get to Australia and all these other places and see the world. But as a mental health thing, I think that would do worse for me than better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, that's the thing. When I when I first started traveling quite a bit, um, especially for work, um, I still had a lot of anxiety over it, right? And um, it took some time. And, and, of course, you build up the miles, you build up the status, and, of course, that helps a little bit as well. Um, you get the pre-check, you get the clear, you... You know, you don't have to stand in the long queues and, and things like that. That's what a military uniform was for. That got me <laughs> right. through all that. Ever since I lost that, it don't work the same no more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but once you build that up and get it going, you know, for me, I mean, it's just a routine now, right? Where um, it's not that big of a deal. I'm leaving Sunday to go to RSA in San Francisco. And, you know, I've got the routine. Yeah, as I recall, you... Chris and so many others are going to get to go to RSA 
Looking and forward to my it. My ass is going to be stuck at home. Um, not going to any conferences outside of Pittsburgh this year, which sucks. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to buy the ticket and ask for forgiveness later. Right. Right. <laughs> so, so I do have a question here though. Jermaine Wilson, who is one of my loyal, loyal watchers. He watches every week. He wants to know what exactly does Brad do? Oh, sure. so what do you do, Brad? <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, my day job is that I work for a threat intelligence company um, and um, I oversee the America's Intel team, uh, which basically means we do a lot of pre-sales work um, as well as uh, working with uh, some of our, you know, larger clients um, throughout the life of their uh, journey with us. Um, So we do a lot of deep and dark web or underground uh, Intel and some we do prior to that. Uh, I spent a lot of time with a company called Risk IQ, doing more of the open web uh, intel as well, uh, attack surface management, if you will. Um, prior to that, though, I've been I've been a technologist uh, for a long time. I kind of started my journey as a tier one, or I, they didn't even call it tier one back then. I was just doing um, phone support for dial-up ISP uh, in Kansas City, a little local dial-up called QNet. Uh, back in the late 90s and then from there just wound my way through telecommunications as a voice and data network engineer Um, really a lot of focus on security back before there was even a cyber security you know people talked about it Um, I still say Eric is older than you so Eric has been around since dinosaurs maybe you've been around since the tablets um I don't know. Maybe, maybe. But not the the tablets like the iPads. We're talking like the tablets from the Mac. Yeah, yeah, the stone tablets. Yeah, you – no, that's that's awesome, though, and that is – that's a great gig. And, you know, I I got a few buddies, John Stoner and, and, you know, some others that are in Threat Intel. And and from what I've seen, it's a very, very good career field, um, especially if you like that. You know, I did a lot of research on Recorded Future because that's what they do is – dark web like they have a, mm-hmm. a slew of people that their whole job is just scouring the dark web yeah and and so you know looking at things like that um it is it is very vital and important information especially to companies that don't have a team to do that for them yeah so uh threat intel is always of, of vital importance um of course chris here hey he said what's good brothers i put that up earlier and then he comes along with uh i can apparently hang on the live stream tuesday and wednesday since you're not going Chris, to be there live, they're, but they're going to be... Is that going to be somewhere besides LinkedIn is my question. Because I'm not always on LinkedIn. I can go on my phone to like YouTube and stuff like that. Um, knowing him, though, it'll probably be LinkedIn only. <laughs> but hey, Jess and James and everybody that's in the chat, um, Jermaine, John, my boy Sarn AR, of course, he logs in with his infinite improbability AI login, Daniel, um, all the people. So... Thank you all for joining us tonight. It's uh, I do. This is, look, I'm going to put this out there. So I talked to Brad a little bit before. There's a reason mental health is of uh, importance to me, especially this week. So a lot of people don't know. Um, some may know, some may not. Um, I lost someone very close to me on Sunday. And then, of course, we had Memorial Day. Yeah. Motherfucker couldn't wake, wait a week. You know, he had to do it the day before Memorial Day, which as a veteran, Memorial Day is very, very important for me. Um, you know, that's, that's when we remember those that we've lost and, and the day before, you know, I, I happened to lose one of my best friends. So, uh, mental health, it took a toll on me this week. I plan on doing a lot of things, getting a lot of stuff done. Didn't happen. And so I ain't going to lie. I coped in some of the wrong ways. You know, I drank a hell of a lot more than I should have. Um, as much as I don't like to, I, I sat out there, talked to my wife. We, we, you know, Here's the difference. Some people don't have a supporting cast. They don't have the wife or spouse or husband or, you know, partner of life or friends or family. They're missing something. I will say this. In this family, the cyber family, if you are part of Cyber Warrior Studios, if you tune in every week, if you follow me on Twitter, if you follow me anywhere, I'm part of your family. Chris Cochran, Ronald Eddings, Brad, Eric Bellardo. Ness Hacks, fucking Jermaine, John Good, all these people, we're all family. Yep. 
And so if you ever need anything, if you all ever feel like you're depressed or down or something just isn't right, don't ever hesitate to reach out to us because it's one of the things that is very important. I'm, I, and it is something that we lose. We lose that ability to communicate for some reason or we're afraid to reach out. Don't be afraid. I, I've, I've made a few drunk videos of me being depressed and I've made a few sober videos of me being depressed and upset. It happens. We all get there. We've all been there. So don't be afraid to reach out. No one's going to judge you. But saying that leads me to my next topic, which is keeping in touch. You see, I lost my buddy. I hadn't talked to him in five years. You know, life gets in the way. Wife, kids, work, my shows, family, everything gets in the way. So with your community, with keeping in touch, Brad, I got to ask, are there people in your life that you feel like you should get back in touch with that maybe nothing was bad, no bad blood, no, yeah. no, nothing got in the way. It was just time. It was just, you know what? I ain't got the time for this. I, I, I got, I got other things to do. Yeah. You, you know, we chatted real briefly before we went live. Um, and, you know, it's one of those things where I, I think if, you know, sometimes you have a moment of thinking, oh, I haven't talked to Dan in a while. It manifested in your mind for a reason. And take the just few seconds, shoot a text, or if you have a few minutes, dial dial the number and call. Um, yeah, I, I say Dan specifically because last Saturday evening, uh, it was one of those times he actually, I got a, I got a text from him. He said, hey, I picked up a new bottle of whiskey. Have you tried this? It's like, no, I haven't. I haven't seen Dan in person other than, a, you know, we'll text every now and again here and there. Even though we live five miles away from each other, I haven't seen him since August. And so I took that time and said, Dan, you got to come over tonight. Or I got to come your way. Which is it? What are we doing? Um, you know, I've got some other whiskeys. We can have a little impromptu whiskey tasting tonight. Got some new bourbons you should try. And that Saturday evening was, I think, great for both of us, right? We, there was a larger group out on the patio. I live in an apartment complex and just outside of downtown Kansas City. Um, but we were kind of off to the side, just catching up on things, right? Like, there's a lot he had to say. There's a lot I had to say that we're never going to put in text. It's too much to write out, right? Yeah. And, and so, you know, you have to make the effort as much as possible. Obviously, for me, it's harder. I said I fly a lot. I average over 100 flights a year. And so when I'm home, if I'm not either with my partner and, you know, I'm spending time with her or with my daughter and spending time with her, sometimes people seem to fall out of orbit, but they shouldn't. Um, you know, I will do anything for Dan and definitely uh, many others, right? You just have to make sure that when you think of them or they're reaching out, um, you know, do that. Just answer yeah. and be present as much as you can so that you know, you don't fall into a situation like you had. And I've had that happen to me as well, too, with, yeah. with a, a, a colleague a couple of years ago. Um, that, that hits you hard. I've been through that. Was... I've, been, I've lived the week um, that you lived. In fact, it was just a little, about a year and a half ago, I lived that week. And I, I don't want to live that week again. Or at least I yeah, don't I... want to do it that often, right? Right. And, and that's one of the things, you know, here, here's the thing. And I wear a bracelet every day from until from till Valhalla, 22 a day. We talk about all the mental health issues in, in the veteran community. And as a vet myself, I have I've tried lately, uh, especially the past few months and, and over the past probably the year, past year, I've tried to do more of a, an inner look at what I'm doing and been like, you know what? I know I'm good. Mentally, I have my ups and downs, but I know I'm good. Let me reach out and check on my brothers and sisters. Let me reach out and make sure they're okay. Um, between Ukraine, um, Memorial Day, the suicides, I had a buddy that after I retired, ended up having a stroke out of nowhere. 
and, and passed away. And, and, you know, I couldn't be there for him. I couldn't be there for his family. Um, he was one of those buddies I met in, in tech school and stuff. But, you know, it, it was just one of those things where this stuff happens. And, and we talk about 22 a day in terms of suicides. But it happens every day to even those that have never served. Mm-hmm. People are depressed every day. People have issues. But here's the thing. How often do you say, I'm too busy when they call? Yeah. How often do you say, I'm too busy when you get a text and say, you know what, I'll respond in an hour. That hour may be too late. And that's why, you know, I get it. We're all busy. We all have our lives. But if there's someone close to you, if they're a friend, if especially for those that you say are family, and you're not answering back or, or you say, you know what, I'll wait a day or two or I'll forget about it, whatever. You know, I'll call them when I get time. That was the time. Mm-hmm. By the time you call them back, right. they may not answer. Right. And so I just want people to realize that I've made those mistakes. We all have. As a veteran, I try to make sure these days that I'm once a week, I'm calling someone new that I haven't talked to in maybe a month. I don't, I don't want it to go that long. And I hope others understand that it is very, very important to make these calls, to, to talk to family, to talk to friends, to stay safe and stay healthy. And I don't mean physically healthy because we all know how to stay physically healthy. It, it, some of us, it's easier than others. It's, it's mentally where we get stuck. And I don't want anybody to fall into that trap. Well said. So well said. It's it, it is. It's 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 hard. Uh, mental health is a hard topic. You know, um, keeping in touch is a hard topic because everybody knows you travel. In the army, I traveled all the goddamn time. I was rarely home. <laughs> you know, um, you know, my kids got it. It affected my oldest more than any of them. Um, you know, so it is. It's hard. When you're trying to like concentrate on yourself to realize that those you've impacted may need you. Those you have once called brother or sister or friend, they may not be calling for money or for help in in any physical sense. It's just, I need someone to talk to. I need someone to vent to. And I can't tell you how many times I've picked up the phone and be like, look, I don't need shit. I just need to vent, please. Let me just, let me just yell and bitch and complain i have no solutions i just need to get this shit off my chest and they're like go for it I'm like all right cool get out of the way they're like you done yeah i'm good now all right cool so how's your day going <laughs> right. Right. so well, you know it is one other thing i'll add to that real quick um what you said is yeah it's one thing to vent to friends family partners whatever. Um, it's another thing to make sure that, um, and I see it in the comments quite a bit, find a community, find a community. Um, communities are so important. And, you know, Derek, you talked about it earlier about just everyone working in, in, in cyber, in various aspects and things. Grow those relationships too. You know, it doesn't matter if, you, you know, you, they work at a competitor Um, whether you're on the vendor side or even, you know, if you're not right, um, you know, you have peers in the industry and it's good to have people to vent that actually know what you're going through and can maybe even help give different perspectives on what you're going through. Cause maybe they went through it a couple of months ago and they, you know, they have some thoughts on how to get through that or, you know, maybe they don't know, but at least they're listening and then maybe they do go through it later, but they've now they've thought about it and was like, okay, I've had some, you know, this is maybe how I'm going to get through this or they'll reach back out to you, for example, as well. Um, you know, that's why I love in our industry, just the various ISACs and various communities, right. Um, you know, for the last several years I've been on the vendor side and, um, I, I just love when I, you go into a client and they said, you know, an airline, for example, right? And they're like, oh, yeah, well, we were talking to such and such airline about this, you know, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, they're, they're frenemies, I, I think, right? You know, they're, uh, it, it, you know, in, in the public arena, these are, 
you know, these companies are hardcore competitors, but behind the scenes, everyone's friend, everyone knows everyone. And I love that about the various communities uh, across what we do. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's something that I think we see it less maybe in the, in the people I interact with. Right. Because, you know, I've got a buddy who I met um, when I worked for one of my former MSSPs and he works as a regional sales guy or dish. I don't know. He's high up in <laughs> logarithm sales engineering. Right. Mm-hmm. Great guy. Um, I still talk to him to this day. Every once in a while, I reach out. I'm like, hey, how's it going? How you been? He doesn't try to sell me anything. I don't try to be like, hey, I need anything. It's just yeah. a conversation. Right. But if I have an issue, you know, with logarithm or something like that, I know I could reach out to him. Yeah. But here's the kicker to it. The guy was a hell of an offensive security engineer. The dude could pen test and vulnerability assess the, with the best <laughs> of them. He was a red teamer in his, in his core before he got to where he was going. And so... You know, I see these things, and so me and him, I won't lie, he got me completely hammered at two different conferences I went to with him. <laughs> He's like, hey, I got a card. Here you go. I'll pay for it. We're good. I got blitzed. It happened. But he's still a good friend. And you're not going to say why? I ain't got that kind of money, man. Nobody paid for me. The other two conferences were paid for, for a form, from a former company. <laughs> I just go to B-Sides Pittsburgh now and get lit. There you go. That's all I do. There you go. <laughs> That's close to home. <laughs> but, yeah, so, you know, developing those – even today I called a buddy who – he got me my first job at an MSSP after I retired out of the Army. Left there, left the recruiting agency, now works for another company, and I just hit him up today on the way home and was mm-hmm. like, hey – he was, and he didn't answer. He ended up texting me. He goes, Hey, I was on a meeting. I'm out with family. What do you need? Nothing. Just calling a BS. See how you're doing. Like literally that's all I'm calling for. Just the bullshit. See how, see how things are going with you and on your end. And, and it's because those are, those are the people that when I was struggling, when I didn't have a job, when I was fighting tooth and nail to get to where I want to be, they were there and they weren't just there to find me a job. They were there after to be like, Hey, how's it going? Mm-hmm. How's the family? How's the wife and yep. kids? Anything? Nah, all right, cool. Hey, just ch- just catching up, seeing how things are going. And that's what's important. Not the, I want to pitch you something. I want to sell you something. This is important. No, it's the, the personal relationship. And that's what matters. You know, you, you just said something that actually reminded me of a of, of, of topic. So you were on your drive home and mm-hmm. reached out and... So now that I'm thinking back, um, that's one of the things I think I personally have lost by not having an office that I go to, um, is that drive home. Because, um, for example, um, like I said, I, I used to work for Risk IQ. They had an office uh, uh, out in the outskirts of uh, Kansas City. And it was like a maybe 10, 15 minute drive. It wasn't long. But every time I left the office, I would just start dialing numbers. And do you do that too? Do just, you say too? Hi to, just say hi to people, right? <laughs> we didn't have to talk about anything specifically. How you been? <laughs> What's going on? What are you doing this weekend? You know, just things like that. And um, that's the thing, right? Like when I'm traveling, when I leave the airport, I'm not calling people typically. Um, obviously COVID, no one was going to the office. Um, now I'm working for a company that's Israeli based. There's no office anywhere in the United States. So, you know, my commute is 10 feet from my bed most days. Um, and so maybe I need to put some time at the end of the day on my calendar that just says calls, right? Yeah. And let's pretend that I'm commuting. Um, but Maybe step outside, get some fresh air, and just start dialing some numbers. I haven't had that drive time where I thought, hey, let's just call some people. And I would just go through the list and think, oh, I haven't talked to Kelly in a while. Or I haven't talked to Dan. Or I haven't talked to Gabby or Taylor or whoever, right? Um, I got to I gotta write that down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it, but it's a great idea. And so, Chris... Our, our brother, Chris Cochran here, coming in with the words of wisdom. He says, Jordan Har- Harbinger 
Harbinger has a cool network course that teaches you about staying in touch with folks. Free and super valuable. Change the way I operate. And it's on his site, jordanharbinger.com slash courses. Definitely recommend people go to that. Um, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, me, I am. I'm the type of person, if I got to drive, I'd say if I'm by myself and have to go more than, say, a half hour, 45 minutes, I'm on the phone. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up speakerphone or if I have my AirPods in, I'll, I'll pull it up on there or whatever. But I'll find a way and I will call people. And if, if the first person don't answer, I'm calling the next person and the next person. And depending on how long the conversation goes, I may talk to one people. I may talk to five people. It, it really depends. But I always – that's why I do like longer drives by myself. But I will mm-hmm. say this. Where I used to use those drives to vent – um, having to take your kids to Taekwondo when you're sad and angry and upset, um, driving doesn't clear my head like it used to. Yeah. So <laughs> I was almost in tears on my way this week. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's one of those things where it used to just clear my head. Now it's one of those things where I just start getting, Oh, geez, just hit my mic. Um, <laughs> where I get in my head. And, yeah. and, and and it makes it worse. So I have to be able to make those calls. But when you're driving with your kids, there are just some things you don't talk about with your kids in the car. Yeah. And so I couldn't make any phone calls. But, <laughs> but yeah, definitely those phone calls help. It helps you because you get the vent. You get to talk. You get to catch up. Mm-hmm. So mentally, it puts you in a better, in my opinion, in a better headspace. It really does. Um. And then for those that you're calling, you're checking in to make sure, A, they're still alive. Um, you don't want to have the issues I ran into this weekend. And B, you're, you're just making sure they're in the right headspace, that they don't have anything going on that maybe they're afraid to reach out about. And that's really what's important. Because sometimes they're just afraid. I don't know who to call. Hey, what's going on? And if you can hear it in the tone of their voice or if they – look, I'm going to say the same thing to everybody. People can hate me for this one. If a guy says I'm fine, if a woman says I'm fine, they're not fine. Something's going on and they need to talk to somebody. I'm fine is the global word for shit's fucked up and I need to talk to someone, but I'm not going to say shit to anybody until you make me. That's what I'm fine means. Fucked up, insecure, neurotic, and emotional. That's what fine means. People that know me well know that when I say I'm fine, I'm not. That's just my go-to. You know, if there's so much head trash or things going on and people are like, Hey, how's it going? It's like, I'm fine. Oh, that's the people who know me well know that that's code for just, uh, pay some extra attention. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's really what it is. And it's funny cause it was years and years ago that I heard that acronym of all fine means is fucked up, insecure, neurotic, and emotional. And when you really think about it, when left to your own devices, somebody says, I'm fine. They are fine. That doesn't mean good. That means fucked up, insecure, neurotic, and emotional. One, if not all four of those things stand true mm-hmm. at that point in time. Yeah. Which means they need to talk to somebody that is going to listen. And I don't mean hear. Hearing is different than listening. Correct. And they just need to listen. They need someone that they know is paying attention and listening. They don't need a solution right then. Maybe they do. Maybe they just say, hey, do you have any advice? But ideally, they just want someone to vent to that is going to listen, understand what they're saying, let them get it off their chest. And then if they need advice and say, hey, do you have any advice for me? That's when you give it. That's when you're like, you know, from what I hear, from what you're going through, I've been through A, B, and C. or, Or whatever the case may be. But you don't ever interrupt somebody that is venting in that way. Yeah, for sure. And and, and I think we miss that. I think all of us miss that. We miss, a lot of us miss that mark. I'll I'll be the first one to admit that if somebody's venting, there's times I end up going, well, you see, no, no, shut the fuck up, homie. Like, I wish sometimes people would just tell me to shut the fuck up. I really do. Like, dude, I'm talking. Yeah. Stop. During that time, it's your job to just stay out of the way. Yeah. Until there's a break where they want you to speak for sure. Yep. Yeah. And and that's and that's the hard part. B 
because yeah. we, me personally, I'm a fixer. I told my wife this, you know, if, if I, if I can't fix something, I get very, very frustrated. If I can't fix a problem, whether it's a family problem, a physical problem, a mental problem, if I can't fix it, I'm doing something wrong because I should be able to, right. I'm your husband, I'm your partner. I'm, 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 I'm there for you. I'm the other half. And if I can't fix it, there's an issue, but sometimes you can't fix it. You just need to listen. You just need to be there. And I struggle with that personally mm -hmm. with, with my wife all the time. I want to fix everything. Yeah. You got to take away their pain, but you can't. And so it's, it's difficult. So how do you, Brad, how do you, or have you, you know, do you have those issues of, of wanting to fix things and just not knowing how to deal when you can't? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, so um, again, I'm going to date myself a little bit here. Right. But think back to the movie Pulp Fiction and the wolf. Oh, you sit in the wolf. That's all you had to say. Uh, you know, I, I, I always see myself as the, as Winston Wolf, right? You got a problem. I'm going to fix it. And you know, I, gosh, I, by any means necessary, even if I'm in, you know, and even I, if I'm involved in something and it's like, okay, we're in a bad situation. We got to fix this. Um, first story that comes to mind is so during the, the pandemic, um, so in Kansas City, uh, downtown at our Union Station and uh, Liberty Memorial is what we call it. It's actually the only World War I um, museum, I think, in America, right? It's the official World War I monument and museum. It's in downtown Kansas City, overlooks Union Station. It's got this huge lawn. Every Memorial Day weekend on Sunday evening, the Kansas City Symphony would put on what they call celebration at the station. The symphony would play, um, there'd be tens of thousands of people, and then they do fireworks over the station. Well, during the pandemic, they weren't doing it. Last year, um, so last Memorial Day, just a little over a year ago, um, instead of doing celebration at the station, they decided, well, let's do a hot air balloon festival. So again, everyone's just wanting to get out of their homes, wanting to be in public again, be around people. Tens of thousands of people show up to the Liberty Memorial and they were ill prepared for the crowd that came. There was a bank of maybe 10 or 12 porta potties. There was- You probably need 50? <laughs> you need a lot more than that. There was probably uh, two um, like drink trucks where you could buy beer, or booze, or even Coke, water, bottles of water. And then they had like three food trucks. So the lines were hundreds of people deep at all of these things. And me and my friends, we all get together, we walk the mile to Union Station, we get there and we're like, okay, we're here, let's do this. And, you know, we're looking at these lines going, no effing way, we're not doing this. This, this, but, you know, we had kids with us too and they wanted to see the hot air balloons. They weren't gonna take off, but they were gonna, once it got dark, dark they were gonna blow them up. It was, you know, it was gonna be all pretty to look at. And so at one point, everyone's just sitting on a blanket, all dejected, like we have to spend the next three or four hours here with the, you know, for the kids. And I'm looking up on the hill and there's the Weston Hotel. So we, right next to all of this is what we call Crown Center, which is, um, you know, like an entertainment area um, built way back by Hallmark Cards, like in the 50s or something. And they've got a Weston Hotel right there that overlooks the Liberty Memorial, Union Station, right. all of that. And the Winston Wolf and me came out, and I immediately got my phone out, opened up the Marriott app, checked in, you know, look, booked a room, 
and said, I'll be right back. Walk across the street, go in, get a room. I go up. It's the wrong room. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it, the windows are all obscured by trees. I go back down. I said, no, 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 no. I'm either, you're either canceling this or I'm getting a room overlooking. They gave me another key. I go upstairs. Perfect view of everything going on. And then I text everyone that's still down there and I say, okay, room nine, whatever, come across the street, I'll let you in. Ordered food, <laughs> ordered drink delivery, ordered all the things. We had a hotel party, overlooking everything, took all the chairs in the room, lined them up in front of the window. The kids got to sit there and, and watch the balloons blow up. And the adults, we cracked some beers and had some pizza and that's just, you know, that's the Winston Wolf in me trying to, trying to be the fixer. So, and, and you have to, like, I don't know. It's, it's not in everybody. Some people are very much like, leave me out of it. Leave me, leave me be. If, if, mm -hmm. if, if, and I've, I've had those conversations. I've gotten in trouble for those conversations um, of trying to fix things. Or if you're not going to provide a solution or do something better yourself or better, whatever situation you're in, quit your bitching. That is very much how I am. I am I, as much as I want to fix things. If you give me a way to fix it, I'll fix it. Yeah. If I don't have a way to fix it, I'll listen if that's what you need. But if you're coming to me complaining and bitching and want a solution that is just improbable for me to do, then we're going to have issues because then you're just bitching and complaining. <laughs> and, and the worst is um, when you come to me with a solution, but don't want to do the solution. Mm -hmm. sure hey this is how you can do better oh i don't want to do that yeah. well then <laughs> i don't know what to tell you homie that's right. that's that's see you later that's where you're at <laughs> like, yep. i'll see myself out like <laughs> i don't know what to tell you um so so it is it's it's very very um different for different people yeah some people want to be left out of everything i want to be included I do. I'm the same person. I want to fix problems. Yep. That's when I feel mentally, that's what helps me the most is, is helping people, is, is making them happy and, and smile and laugh and, and, and figure out what's wrong and give them a solution. And they come back and be like, hey, that worked. Ah, I know. But glad you told me. Now I know. Like, I'm going to take that to the next person. <laughs> you know, so uh, it's just one of those things. This is how I've always been. Yep. I've got to fix problems. I'm a people pleaser, which which is which sucks. That's what people say about me all the time. They're like, "You're such a pleaser." That's just it's burned me in the past. Personality, I'm, yeah, yeah, and it's burned me. It's gotten me in trouble, but at the same time, I can't change who I am. Yeah, I just yep. can't. It's 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 who I am. I've tried, I've tried to be like, you know what, fuck you, I don't care, but I do care. So I'm gonna go do it anyways. Yeah, yeah. I may not want to go to my parents' house, but guess what? I'm gonna go do it anyways. It makes them happy, which then in turn makes me happy until I got to stay there for eight hours and then right. go home. So <laughs> it's just how I've always been. And that is why, like, even this week, you know, and, and you saw it, Brad, I put out how many videos and I'm just yeah. like, yeah. I should not be doing this. I should be taking this time for me. Yep. But I'm a man of the people. So what do I do? I'm there for the people. Sure. Put out some motivation, homie. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> it's just it's 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 weird. Like not interacting with others is just odd for me. I don't mm -hmm. feel mentally it just messes me up if I can't be there for others. Well, and I think especially with what you were going through this week, having a sense of normalcy probably took your mind off of things and is exactly what you needed, you know, to at least get through the downtime, right? You know, there's going to be all sorts of things going on, but then there's going to be those minutes or maybe even hours where the last thing you want to do is just be in your own head about everything that went on. And so making those videos and trying to at least continue your routine, having that sense of normalcy was probably a really good thing for you to do. And, and it was, you know, and I, I talked to my boss earlier. So, again, 
This this episode is all about mental health. If you got ideas, advice, questions, concerns, please put it in the comments. Just put it in the chat and let me know what you think. But let me know what you think of the cowboy hat. I thought I was rocking it <laughs> yesterday, so let's let, let's go with it. Um, but I do. I, I I look at. I talk to my boss, and I do. I yell at my boss all the time. Me, I will not yell. Me and him have conversations because he'll take time off, whether it be a weekend, a three day weekend, a week off, whatever. And I'm like, dude. You're off. Quit quit signing in to work. Please stop this shit. I don't need to be seeing your messages when you're off. And um, he knows that about me. And so he knows, like, when I take PTO, it's supposed to be for me. It's supposed to be my time to be with the family, do the things I need to do, um, recharge, regenerate, all that stuff. And with what was what I was going on with this week, you know, I took a few days. I didn't I, I didn't say anything to work at all. Hit the damn mic again. I'm having issues with that. <laughs> Um, I, I didn't, um, sign in the work and it happened to be Thursday. Was it? Excuse me. Yeah, it was yesterday. It was Thursday. Um, you know, I had the funeral and everything yesterday and I happened to be sitting at my computer, um, before we were leaving. It was earlier in the day and I was there and all of a sudden I got a call. I said, Hey, someone says calling you for a meeting. All right, cool. Sign on. And legitimately. My boss looked at me and said, what the fuck did you sign on for? Not in those words. Um, we It was a yeah. client meeting, so he couldn't necessarily say that. But I knew what he wanted to say, and I was like, I got a call. Figured you need me. I was in front of my computer. Said I joined. Go. Yep. All right, cool. See you later. <laughs> yep. Yep. And then today, we have a conversation. And had I not responded, he wouldn't have kept going. But I responded. And I was like, hey, and he was like, all right. And he goes, all right, before I kick you out of here, what do you think about this? Cool. All right. See you later. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Yeah. Mother- but, but I was going to keep, all right, fine. I'll go Good. enjoy my weekend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and you know? we need more people that will do things like that, right? Like he said, don't, you don't need to be here. You know, just move, go on. We got this. Um, and I don't think people do it enough. I, it's something I make sure that I practice as a leader um, quite a bit. And in fact, you know, earlier in the week, uh, I had an interview. <clears throat> and, you, you know, the guy came on and looked very casual, which no big deal, right? We're very casual um, in what we do. And you could kind of hear some, some stuff in the background. He had a virtual background going on. I was like, hey, how's your week been? He's like, oh, I'm on vacation in Mexico. He's like, I'm in some remote beach, like south of Puerto Vallarta. And immediately was like, come on, man. You know, I, I want to talk, but enjoy your vacation. Be with your wife and your daughter. And he, he said, don't worry. You know, and, and it was his, I, I left it up to him. I was like, we can talk again when you're back. Yeah. There's no rush here go be present. And, you know, he said, well, we've been here for a few days already. This is what we've done. He said, I'm really looking forward to this conversation and I don't mind taking it. And so I was like, okay, then that's perfectly fine. Cause it's funny because, um, a year ago when I was actually talking to this current company, uh, cyber six skill, I was in Belize on vacation and I took my first interview with the company um, from my hotel room in Belize. And again, he could tell, and it's like, you look like you're somewhere tropical. I was like, yeah, I'm on vacation. (laughs) I'm in Belize. And he's like, why are you talking to me? Let's not talk. Let's just, he's go do your thing. I'm like, no, I want to talk to you. Let's do this. And, and so again, you know, that stuck with me. It's like, and you know, sometimes people, they, you know, that are, if they want to talk, let and I'll allow it, right? But right, yeah, it's it's one of those things, anyway. So, yeah, definitely, and I completely agree. You know, here's the here's the thing. When I was in the army, as a soldier, you're on duty twenty four seven, regardless of what anybody tells you, whether you're in the Air Force, Marines, Navy, Space Force, Coast Guard, you know, Army, it, it doesn't matter. You're on duty twenty four seven, because at any time you can get a call and have to be, you know, put the uniform back on and go somewhere. And so even when I was in class, 
or on leave or what have you, um, I'd always answer my phone. If somebody called me, I answered. I could be three drinks deep at my grill at my house and I would <laughs> answer the phone. Yeah. But that's because that's who I was. I didn't take leave per se. I would take leave. I'd go away. Everybody knew I was miles away, maybe hundreds of miles, but I wouldn't not answer my phone. It's kind of double negative, but you get the point. I would always answer my phone. That sounds better. So no matter what happened, that's what I would do. There's only one time that that was effective. And that's when I was in a class and I was stationed in, um, I was stationed at the Pentagon and my bosses at the time, I had military, but we also had civilian. Our chief engineer was a civilian. Our director was a civilian. And so I was always calling, making sure things were getting done. Mm -hmm. And I ended up getting in touch. I think it was the, the director. I, rem I remember the guy. Awesome dude. I'm not going to say his name because I don't want to put him on blast. Um, but great guy. Both my chief engineer and him were both amazing people. And I called and I was talking to him. He goes, what the hell are you calling me for? Aren't you on leave or in class? Yeah, so? Aren't you on leave or in class? <laughs> yes. Yep. Go do it. Yep. Quit calling. It's fine. Quit calling. That was the only time. Other than that, in the military, generally speaking, we have, I got to call them bad leaders, um, but they full-heartedly believe you're on duty 24-7, no matter what. I don't care how many drinks you've had. I'm going to call you and you're going to answer and you're going to do what I say. Yep. Okay. And that's how I, I went about business. So it was odd. And so coming out, I, I still was on that, in that mindset. If I took vacation, if I, I was on leave, whatever the case may be, I was always by my phone. 24-7, yep. seven, seven days a week, I picked up my phone. Three o'clock in the morning, one o'clock in the morning, it didn't matter. Wasn't until 2020 that changed. You talk about three years out of the military before I changed that mindset. In 2020, I went on vacation. I don't care what people think about me. I went on vacation to fucking Tennessee in 2020, like June or July. I don't care. Judge me all you want. It doesn't matter to me. Went on vacation. I was with my family, my parents, my sisters, brother-in-laws, nieces, nephews, cousins. Everybody were away. I cut off all notifications to the job I was at. Cut off everything. The only communication I had was to my immediate family, those I was there with. And it was the best thing I ever did. Holidays came around, did the exact same thing. If I was off, I was off. It was the holidays. I ain't talking to none of you. I cut off <laughs> all notifications to work. I am not responding to work messages during my holiday. I'm here with family. Yep. And since that time, that has been respected by the people I work with. Absolutely. That when I am off, I am off. Yep. But here's the thing. And here's how you... Everybody talks about mental health and like, oh, people need to respect it. No, 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 no. You need to put your foot down and it, you need to dictate yeah. your mental health yes. and when you need to take a break, when you need. If you're off, you dictate you're off. If you're approved leave or PTO or whatever, I say leave like I'm still in the army. <laughs> if you're approved PTO and vacation, Cut off your notifications. You talk to nobody. It's on you. The moment you break that, the moment you talk to work on your time off, it becomes expected. I had a guest of mine have to bail out one time because they decided to stay at work late uh, when they were told to leave. So it was not their fault. They thought they were going to get to go in time. But when you make that you, the more work you give yourself, the more you're willing to put towards work, the more they're going to give you. And I hate to say it, but that's the way it is. If you go above and beyond every damn time, guess what? That is now the norm. Now you're not going above and beyond. Now you're doing the normal. So when you go less than that, you are not doing what you should have been doing to begin with. It sucks to say, but that's a fact. If you show your boss you can get something done in a half hour and you're doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I need a week on this. 
why? It just took you a half hour yesterday. What do you mean you need a week? Yep. Now there's a problem. I love Chris's uh, comment here, right, about the kids will remember it. I mean. I got five of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you've got way more than I do. Um, <clears throat> but not only will they, I mean, they're very perceptive, a lot more perceptive than sometimes we give them credit for. Um, they'll remember it. And, you know, eventually when they're older, they'll, they'll bring it up every now and again. Or, and that's why I think, you know, it's also important that, um, you know, you just be present with them, give them, give them, you know, within reason, uh, you know, what they want and, and, uh, you know, leave it to the next generation. That drives me a lot. Yeah, definitely. And that's the big thing is the next generation. So before we sign off, it is top of the hour. So before I let you go and go ahead and enjoy your your weekend and your Friday, I did want to say this when we talk about the next generation and their mental health and how we go about doing things with them. Everybody's different. I don't judge anybody for how they do things. Trust me, I'm the last person to judge anybody. I swear in front of my goddamn kids. Go ahead, judge me all you want. I don't fucking care. We all need haters. But at the end of the day, you know, how you do things is on you. But... You need to be there for them. And that's the big thing, being present. Yep. This phone right here has run my life for years. There were so many times I had so many games on this phone, been on social media and done so many things and ignored my kids, said, give me a minute. Just one minute was turned into 10, was turned into a half hour, was turned into an hour. It has happened, and I guarantee you, for most of the people that are in IT and cybersecurity and love technology, it has happened to almost all of you with kids. Cats I play. personally have chosen that and if my kids aren't in the room, then okay, I'll get on the phone. If my wife's on her phone, I'll get on my phone. But if your kids are in the room, if you're choosing, if you made that choice to watch a movie with your kids, to be there with your kids, Put the damn phone down, put the laptop down, and yep. be there. Yep. Because their mental health matters too. Because they will remember, you want to talk about all the issues that we have today? Imagine kids growing up where their parents just stare in front of a screen all day. Yep. And that's all they know. Yep. So how can they be raised to be good kids or be good adults and be respectful and be there and help people? If you aren't teaching them how, and that's the biggest thing. If you're not teaching them, as a father of five, I have made my mistakes with all five of my boys. I am doing everything in my damn power to correct it. But it is on us as individuals, as parents, to correct those issues. Quit staring at your screens when your kids need your attention. I'm not telling you to give them iPads or laptops or anything else. I am telling you to listen. And we talked about that earlier. Listen. Don't hear. Listen and understand. Because they may need something that is just a minute of your time. And you are not willing to give it to them. Yeah. So you want to talk about all the drama we have today? It starts at home. Pay attention to your kids and figure out what the hell they need. Now, as I say that, yes, I know. Sometimes I go on a serious note on this show. I love you all. Brad, please, before I sign us off, go ahead, give us some final words. I mean, this has been fun. Um, I don't know. I got in my head a little bit about, you know, not just coming on this. This is the very first podcast I've ever been on. Um, I loved it. I can't believe that I see the clock in the corner. It's been over an hour. Um, flew by. I Anytime you want me to come on, happy to do it. Um, I, I, this was, again, a topic that not only was relevant for you, it's something I'm passionate about. Um, so I appreciate the invite. I appreciate the hospitality and the time. Um, I love seeing all the comments. And yes, Jess, I saw the um, uh, comment about the World War One Museum. That you can spend hours in there. It is, and for those of you who are, that are not local to Kansas City, 
the World War I Museum in Kansas City is, um, it's a sobering reminder um, of it, not only war, but just even back then, um, it is, it's, a, it's something that shouldn't be missed. Uh, if you're in the area, definitely go check it out. It is, it, it's something everyone needs to see. So I'll leave it at that. It's been great. Cheers, Appreciate Brad. It. Cheers. Definitely. Um, I've seen some sobering reminders myself with my time in San Antonio, Texas, um, and going oh, to yeah. see the Alamo. So I, I've been there, seen a lot of the museums, been the Holocaust Museum, all those other things. Understand this before I sign off, before I go and say all my serious stuff and, and sign off the air. I did want to put this up on your screen. Chris Crockin let us know that on Ax, Axonius's website, they are going to be doing the RSAC live stream. So please, Tuesday and Wednesday, I believe he said, um, on LinkedIn. If you're not on LinkedIn, you're missing out. Go check out that. Um, that's the website so you can go see it. Um, otherwise, look. This is a very important topic to me because I'm in my head a lot. Mental health will always be important to me. And if you need someone to reach out to, regardless of the mood I'm in, please, please, I beg of you, reach out to me. I would rather vent and hear you vent than to have one less person that is going to be successful in this world. Yep. Always. Always. I am very passionate about what I do. I am very passionate about the people that I surround myself with. And I am very, very fortunate to have a family, friends, and a community such as we have here and such as Hacker Valley Media, Raices, Twitter, everything. I have developed a community. I have my own Discord. I don't publish it often. I don't promote it often because, honestly, it's not too loud. But I have, I am very, very appreciative of everybody, those that supported me in the last week, those that have been there, those that have seen, those that have lent their kind words, Truly, I am grateful and I thank you. Without further ado, though, this is Security Happy Hour. I am the Cyber Warrior. This is Brad Liggett. And I am very, very happy to have had you all here tonight. If you would be so kind, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And share this content, share this video with all of your friends and family because mental health is very, very important to everybody, not those in the not just those in the cyber community. Yep. I love you all. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I will see you all in the next one.